That looks just like tears. Many molecules behave similarly to tiny magnets. One end of the molecule slightly positive, the other end slightly negative, which means the molecules will stick together. The so-called dipole-dipole attraction, an intermolecular force. Now what's the upshot of molecules behaving like little magnets? Well, it means that it takes more energy to turn them from solids to liquids and liquids to gases. Why does it take more energy? Because you have to break apart these dipole-dipole bonds. The classic question is comparing iodine monochloride with bromine. Now they both had the same shape and essentially the same number of electrons, so their London dispersion forces will be equal. But because iodine monochloride has a dipole and bromine doesn't, that explains the difference in their boiling points. The intermolecular force between one bromine molecule and the next is London dispersion forces, the weakest intermolecular force. But these moving white lights show the dipole-dipole attraction, which is stronger. Since one end of iodine monochloride is a little positive, the other a little negative, they attract to each other. And so since they're attracting to each other, these molecules, much more strongly than the bromine does, the boiling point will consequently be elevated. A very quick recap of London dispersion forces. Uh, this bromine and that bromine both have the same electronegativity. They both love electrons the same. And so there won't be a permanent charge separation. The electrons won't be over here any more than they'll be over there. But there will be a temporary charge separation as the electrons whiz around, uh, round and round and round. So maybe in one fraction of a second, there'll be slightly more electrons on the right-hand one than on the left-hand one. The electrons in this bromine are going to repel the electrons in the other bromine, making them move down, electrostatic repulsion, leaving a slightly positive charge at the top. And this is the so-called London dispersion force. There's a much more detailed video on that uh, in the series. It only lasts a fraction of a second, and London dispersion forces are the weakest of the intermolecular forces. A fraction of a second later, that's broken because these dipoles have shifted. Over to iodine monochloride. Now this has a permanent dipole. One side of this molecule is always going to be a little bit more negative than the other. So looking at the beloved IB data booklet, electronegativity is the bottom number. And you can see that uh, iodine is 2.7 and chlorine is 3.2. The higher the number, the more electrons in the bond are attracted towards that element. So chlorine has a higher electronegativity than iodine. And so to show that dipole that's formed, I'm going to draw this. That's the positive end, that's the negative end. And again, there's more detail on dipoles in another video in the series. So now this molecule and that molecule are going to be attracted towards each other. And this attraction is going to be much more permanent over here, the dipole disappeared. It was instantaneous. But over here, the dipole is permanent. So there's going to be an attraction between this negative and this positive, and this positive and this negative. And this is the so-called dipole-dipole attraction. So these actually had extra bonds that are stronger between the molecules than the bonds over here, which are weaker. And that's why it takes a higher temperature. If I want to rip this molecule off of that one, I have to put more energy in to break those stronger dipole-dipole attractions. Over here, it's got a lower boiling point because to pull this molecule off of that, I've only got to break the weaker London dispersion forces. Alrighty, these are common molecules with dipoles. Not common that you'll bump into them in everyday life, but common for the IB. All right, this is a methoxymethane. It looks like it has no dipole. For example, this end of the molecule and that end of the molecule are symmetrical. So where's the dipole? Well, you have to know that it's actually a bent molecule. Oxygen 
has the higher electronegativity than the carbon. And so they'll tend to stack up a little bit like this. The positive end of this molecule is attracted to the negative end of that molecule. So there's your dipole-dipole attraction. Why is it bent? Well, don't forget for VSEPR theory, this oxygen has those two extra lone pairs there. On to this one, fluoromethane. Actually, let's make that trickier. Difluoromethane. So I'm going to draw this out incorrectly. See if you can spot what's wrong. So in 3D, you can see now that this tetrahedral shape actually has a dipole going in this direction. That's the negative end. And if I was to draw in another molecule, I could show the dipole-dipole attraction. So this molecule has a dipole, as does that one, and the dipole-dipole attraction is between the negative end of this and the positive end of that. There we go. And this one here again the dipole points the negative end towards the fluorines and just stack them up. So the negative end of this molecule, I'll make the dipoles the same, Thornley. Try to draw them the same length. So now the negative end of this molecule is attracted to the positive end of that one. And there's the dipole-dipole attraction. So it's the shape and the difference in electronegativity that gives you the molecular dipole. There's another video about this, but this video is about the dipole-dipole interaction. There, there, and there.